This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, you're listening to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio. And you should bring your dog, but stick it on a leash because today, today the cats are running free in the studio. They're rubbing up against our legs and they're scratching on the furniture and they're turning around to look at your dogs to say, are you going to chase me? I don't think so. Because today we've got Dusty Ravel, my favorite cat wrangler. Welcome to the show, Dusty. Well, thank you. Do you know what they say? Cats be crazy. And uh, <laughs> so I guess we're going to get a little crazy today, aren't we? There you go. I think cats are actually misunderstood more than crazy. But I we can think talk. You were right. <laughs> yes. I, and you know what? Uh, I was thinking of you the other day. Well, I think of you often. But the other day, I had this person, I was at the vet with a dog, you know, picking it up from whatever it needed doing, one of my customers. And this person was talking to me about their terrible cat and how my cat hates everything and my cat this and my cat that. And every suggestion, I was like, oh, your two cats don't get along. How many litter boxes do you have? And he said, one. And I said, well, you might want to get another one. (laughs) Oh, no, that won't work. And it was literally everything he came up with as a problem. I gave him a recommendation and he told me it wouldn't work without trying it. And I thought, this must be Dusty's life. Is this your life? Is this what goes on with you? It is totally my life. You know, when I was working on my book, uh, 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 about uh, cat scene investigator about inappropriate elimination, mm-hmm. I was which means uh, she's talking about the bathroom, guys. I'm okay. talking about the bathroom. I'm talking about the litter box that that Deb was just talking about. And there was one lady. I don't know why cat people want to think their cats are being bad. But this yeah. is a lady that yeah. was running an adopt-a-pet. This is a compassionate, <laughs> loving person. Uh, she oh loves animals. She loves her cats. And she um, she said, oh, well, can you tell me why my cat is suddenly too uppity to squat in the litter box? Uppity. Yeah, uppity. That's Dude. a word. You, uh, uppity. Who, oh, come yeah, on. Cats are definitely up. And, I, you know, <laughs> to me, I, I honed in on the word suddenly. because Yes. Suddenly, the past any any new behavior, any change in behavior is a sign that there's something physically going on with this cat. And I said, well, you know, I, uh, from what you've said, um, I think it's time to take your cat to the vet because it sounds like he may have uh, arthritis. And by the way, the cat was eight years old. Oh, no, no, no. Could have no, blocked no. urine, could have, um, like, there's all kinds of things that could make the cat not happy all of a sudden to use the litter box that are physical, well, medical, using, and easy to he fix, He was using right? the litter box. He mm-hmm. just wasn't squatting. And, oh, uh, uh, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I said, well, you know, you really need to take him to the vet. Oh, no, no, he doesn't have arthritis. Well, why do you think he doesn't have arthritis? <laughs> oh, well, he can jump on the counter. Uh-huh. And so in order, now she she was in her 60s, or probably early 60s. The the cat was uh, eight, nine years old. So they're approximately the same age and people, kitty years. And I said, well, you know, it, it dawns on me that it just takes a second to jump on the counter. But to go to the bathroom, it takes, you know, 20, 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds. Of a and, deep uh, squat, which is a different kind a of muscle, squat. too, said, right? I've got mm-hmm. an idea. Why don't you <laughs> assume a squat for 60 seconds and let's see how well you do? Well, she refused to do it, but it was the only way I could convince her that her cat yes. wasn't too uppity. She was convinced the cat was doing this on purpose, and that just drives me nuts. Well, yeah, I I used to find this with children. When my kids were little, you'd run into these moms that were so delighted to tell you how much of a struggle they were enduring with this child of theirs because this child had so many issues, medical, behavioral, whatever. But it was like they were just dying to come up to you. And it's like they wanted a badge because their kid can't have gluten or their kid, you know, is and they had all these special names for it. And oftentimes it just it just seemed like something the person was invested in 
You know, even if the kid did have this issue, the person was very connected and attached to never really moving along, you know? And Absolutely. and I think <laughs> I think that sometimes happens with animals. But I want to um I want to make sure before we get off on all kinds of cat topics. I have so many to ask you about, honestly. <laughs> I sent you a picture of a mug I saw, the Crazy Cat Lady Starter Kit. I hope you saw it. It's just I a bunch. I did not see that, but tell oh. me because our, well, our, we're gonna post our listeners need to hear about it. <laughs> it's just a, a mug that you could buy to drink coffee in. But on the mug, there's a picture, and it, it says Crazy Cat Lady Starter Kit, and it's a picture of four kittens in a basket. And that's really, <laughs> you know, that's really all it takes. So spay and neuter your cats. Let's start with that. It, it goes really quick. They can have babies when they're babies themselves. And then every two months after that, surprisingly quick. Don't even chance it. Just spay and neuter right away if you get a kitten or a cat. Okay, so Dusty, well, okay, lost well, let me cats. Add one thing this to ties that. in, absolute, right? This ties into the lost right. cats thing because they do go missing looking for mates, don't they? They, they do, they do. But let me get back to that, uh, okay. uh, the spay and neuter. Uh, absolutely do it, and they're going to get, they're going to go into heat, uh, much sooner than you think. They can actually go into heat at four months. So, uh, you know, if your vet says they can't do it until they're six months, that is not, you know, that is old, that is old wisdom. And it's old information. Anyway. It and at two months, animation. that's when you get your kitten. That's when they're weaned. So you've only had it like a month or two and it's time. You know, you may as well just do it right when you get your kitten because it's not used to your house yet. It's not used to freedom yet. It's smaller. It's easier to confine it with the little cone collar and all that jazz till the surgery stitches are removed, right? It's just a little bit easier. Well, later. and the other thing is if you get them uh, spayed or neutered before uh, the body starts introducing hormones, they're going to be much much healthier later in life. Uh, kittens that are spayed prior to the first heat uh, have an almost non-existent chance of getting breast cancer. So if you want to keep your kitten a long time and have a healthy, happy life, get them spayed before they have that first heat. Okay, on to long Well, <laughs> and, and the males, the thing about the males is they start looking for mates and they start looking for the scent of it and they start running across streets and getting hit by cars and going missing very young. They get Randy very early. They don't know why. They don't know when. They don't. All of a sudden, their nose is in the air and boom, your indoor cat is out the door, out the window, squishing past your leg, never done it before, boom, gone. So then he's lost. Okay. What do we do about that, Dusty? Yes, it's called Finding Your Lost Cat, the Practical Cat-Specific Guide for Your Happy Reunion. And uh, it's part of the uh, Cat Scene Investigator Problem Solving Series. And, uh, you know, lost cats, it's a bummer. It's a bummer because uh, most cats, uh, when they're really lost, people don't go out and look for them soon enough. And... uh, uh, they just assume the cat's going to come back. So this is a science-based book on how to get your cat back. And uh, oh, there is a section in there on prevention. And one of the first things I say about prevention is uh, get your cat spayed and neutered and get them microchipped. So, you know, back to the spay neuter, do it. It's gonna, it really does save lives. The thing about microchipping cats as opposed to dogs is it's very hard to identify cats. And tattoos get small and hard to read and covered in hair. And, you know, like you look at a poster of, of 50 black cats, it's very hard to pick out your own, right? And never mind somebody else trying to pick it out. So I think microchipping really makes a lot of sense with cats, really. Well, it really does. And, and every day, you know, it used to be it was very rare. I actually started... Uh, microchipping my cats in in 96 back when uh, a a pet food company first said oh if you buy enough of our cat food we'll we'll give you a free uh, microchip and I managed to buy enough food to microchip all my cats and I've been a believer ever since but back then you occasionally heard about a dog that would be saved by a microchip but almost never a cat and now thank goodness Every day you hear about a cat that uh, was located 1,500 miles away from home, and you go, you know, how did they do that? Did they get inside an engine? Did they get inside a moving box? 
Right. So Jumped in a car or something like that. Yeah. It's the only way to, I mean, and, and, you know, there are some steps. You also have to make sure that when you've had it done, you register the chip. You have to go to the database company and make sure your information is there. And then anytime you change your email address, anytime you change your phone number, you move whatever, you have your place where you work, you need to contact that company and make sure the information is updated. I have a, a dear friend in Houston who's a veterinarian, and she said whenever people bring their uh, the cats that they found in, you know, most of them do have chips. But uh, she said it's very, very rare to find one that's actually registered and up to date. So, mm, so then it's like a detective hunt. Oh, what? Yeah. And you know, this thing about not recognizing your own cat, if your cat is real scruffy from living outside or five years older or gained a lot of weight or lost a lot of weight, you're not going to recognize it. Like you just not. That, that, well, that's so. absolutely right. You know, I mean, unless they have a very defining, uh, defining uh, uh, mark of some kind. And I will say that's one of the things that I did in my book. Uh, you know, I've been in rescue since, Noah's Ark, <laughs> and uh, and one of the things that drives me crazy is these people in rescue who you would think would be knowledgeable will talk about the tabby cat when they're actually, you know, I'm looking at the cat. It's oh, like, that's, yes. That's the oh, so, yes. Yeah. So, oh, my finally, gosh. I have little... this peeve, too. I can't stand it. And when they get the wrong breed, the wrong this, the wrong that, oh, yes, I've had this so often. You know, you're calling around, and, you, and do you have any toy poodles? No, we don't. You go there, and there it is. There's the exact dog you just said. Did you have it? There it is. Oh, we thought that was a mutt. Well, no, that's a toy poodle. Come on. Look at your breed well, book. And, it's and, <laughs> frustrating. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, I... Uh, uh, one of the, the little chapters that I have, it's like a six-page chapter, is a glossary that explains markings. Yes, so especially with cats. Cat. Yes, tuxedo it, versus calico versus, yes, because you have to describe it properly, but a picture's even better and a microchip's the best. We're going to go to a break and come back with Dusty Rainbow, the cat wrangler and author of this new book on how to find your lost cat. And it's in ebooks, so we'll explain that when we come back. Well, when we put him on the Dynavite, he took right to it. All of these symptoms disappeared. Dynavite is nutrition. If you want the dog to be healthy, you got to feed it something healthy. Something that he actually likes to eat. You need to put him on Dynavite. Dynavite for life. If you love your dog, you don't just want him healthy, you want him to be happy. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Hello! You're listening to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio. We're going to move on to some cat behavioral topics real soon. But I want to ask Dusty, for people listening right now who want to get that book, how do they do it? If their cat is missing right now and they want to look at that ebook. What do they do? Well, uh, it, it is available in ebook and paperback. So if you have a friend that has lost a cat, you can give it to him as a present. It's available on Kindle, and uh, I, uh, you can get it on Nook too, if, uh, Barnes and Noble. And uh, it's also available in paperback on Amazon, and will be available. Uh, 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 you can order it anywhere uh, soon. So it's a it's a step by step guide, and uh, I promise you, it really works. <laughs> it, it really works. Well, you know, it occurs to me that oftentimes, cats because I found that sometimes two different homes think the cat is theirs. A cat is owned by two families, and the people have no idea there's another family. And then they find out one day because maybe one family spays the cat, or one family, you know, d- does something, puts a, a, call, a new collar on, and they're like, hey, wait a minute, you know, who's putting a good tag? Why is there a tag with the name Mittens on my cat that I call, you know, Boots? Like, what's going on here? So things well, happen like that. Had that. I actually had that happen. There I did, too, years ago. I had show- that happen. 
He showed up on my doorstep, and oh, he was so hungry. I mean, he was in good shape, but he was so hungry, and so I felt sorry for him. I gave him something to eat, and next thing I know, he's sleeping with me. Well, um, one day, this was back in the the 80s when we let cats wander, and uh, uh, I did have him neutered. Uh, that, but, that's what happened to me. Which, I knew that somebody course, else's cat. <laughs> I did. I absolutely me did. Me too. And, and they thank me for it, thank God. But <laughs> he, he showed up and he smelled like flea powder. Now, again, this is back in the 80s where we didn't have the wonderful spot-ons. Right, like, right. You smell like flea powder, you little two-timer. So I bought a collar <laughs> and, and one of those little barrel uh, uh, mm-hmm. tags and said... I think I stole your cat <laughs> and my phone number, and, and she called me, and, and she said, yeah, you know, I saw him in your yard, and it's okay, you can have him. And uh, anyway, I, you know, I'm sure he continued to two-time me, but uh, yes, it, it really happened, and, and it was very funny. So ID and microchip, very, very important. I yeah totally. I have um, an email from someone who knew you were coming on the show, and they wanted me to ask you something. Which, I mean, normally I would ask a vet, but she says she's already taken the cat to the vet, and they've done everything. They've done, you know, scraped and looked at the skin and checked for fleas and checked for mites and checked for staff and yeast and blah blah blah. Low, whole blood workup. They cannot find anything wrong with this cat, and the vet okay. is recommending some kind. She doesn't name it. I don't know if Apoquel is for cats. I know it is for dogs. It's a new medicine for anti-itching. But she says they're recommending some very expensive anti-itching medicine as well as possibly a behavioral med because they think the cat has OCD. Then what the cat is doing is picking, like just grooming itself excessively to the point where it's bald in patches. Well, where, where are we grooming? What, what area of the body? Uh, everywhere it can reach. Basically, it's got hair on its head and its chest, and it has some hair on the body. I've seen pictures, but Mm -hmm. it's got big bald spots all on the rump and the underside. The legs are fine. The head is fine. It looks just like Mm -hmm. a normal domestic short-haired tabby to me. But like, if I didn't know better, I would say, oh, flea allergy. Get that cat on flea meds. But they say that's not the case, and they have its sibling you know, kept in all the same circumstances, fed the same, all everything, and it has no problems. They are on a flea, a preventative flea med, according to this email. I mean, they okay, are with well, the vet, so they've done everything that the vet could throw at it. They even, you know, they were talking about steroids and anti-itch meds and OCD meds, and they just keep hoping there's something to, st- like, if it was a dog, I'd, I'd be suggesting uh, distraction, more exercise, a big giant bone to chill to chew that's irresistible, so they're not picking at themselves, uh, maybe a cone collar when you can't watch them. Like, but I don't know what to do with a cat like that. What do you do with a cat like that? Well, first, let me say that had they not taken the vet, the cat to the vet, it definitely take the cat to the vet. A lot of times, especially if uh, you're doing, uh, if it's the joints or such, it's not OCD. It could be um, arthritis because cats don't show signs of arthritis uh, like uh, dogs do. And so, anyway, uh, you know, that would be a possibility. This sounds like it's not that. Another I think it's pretty young. Sometimes- she calls. She keeps yeah. calling it a kitten, but it's not a kitten. It's a cat. But I think it's pretty young. You know, it's funny how people are, right? Oh, my puppy. And then you find out it's 11. No, that's right. not a <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. It- but uh, you know there there are uh, it, it could be OCD uh, if it's the belly then uh, it could be that we have some digestive problems that are so far uh, uh, undiagnosed. Uh, if this is well, the whole back there- end, like normally I would think fleas because it's the whole rump area is the real hairless okay. part. But she says there are no fleas. Well, okay. Uh, another thought is, and I don't, you know, I would think the vet would have looked into this. But, you know, have we checked the anal glands? The, you oh. know, the anal glands could be uh, uh, impacted or what? painful or whatever. So yeah. that is, uh, you know, and, and, you know, vets are really good, but I like to go in there with a checklist and say, did you do this? And mm-hmm. so, you know, I would, I would uh, call the vet and make sure that uh, the anal glands were examined and uh, that we don't have any constipation or anything like that, uh, parasi- internal parasites, 
you know, any kind of discomfort could cause them to want to do that. So, so would it be smart if people are listening? I mean, how often do you deworm cats? I deworm puppies a lot every two weeks with strongent. How how often do you deworm cats? Well, okay, you know, if you are using a monthly preventive like uh, 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 Advantage Multi or Revolution, then uh, the cat should be, I mean, uh, that worms the cats for everything except for tapeworms. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, every month if you are doing that, you are, you are worming the cat. I would say that, it, you know, if you, you are not using the monthly preventative, then... Uh, I would do it no less than once a year because you can bring you can bring roundworm eggs in on your shoes. If you have plants, uh, there have been studies that showed that the uh, the dirt you buy for planting mm-hmm. uh, in, inside plants they have roundworm eggs. Oh, oh, that's gross! Oh, oh, yep, oh I yep, hate yep. that idea. That's awful. Uh, so even if you're, you know. Even if you think that your animal is hermetically sealed, it's probably not. But, okay. Uh, okay. So, so we're going to, we have to take another break and we'll be back to talk more about this and other topics that aren't so icky, like <laughs> cats and mimicry. Does your cat learn by watching? I know they do, but we'll hear what Dusty has to say about that. I just know, I know my cats watch. They watch each other. They're always looking. What are you doing? What you got that I want? What's, what's over there? Anyway, I'm going to watch you, see what happens to you when you do that. Oh, nothing happened to you when you jumped on that counter? Then I'm going to jump there, too. Anyway, stay tuned. We'll be back at Animal Party Pet Life Radio with Dusty Rainbolt, and we're going to ask her, can you teach your cat through mimicry? Can they mimic us? I've got a specific example somebody emailed me about that's a little weird, so stay tuned. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. <laughs> Hello, you're listening to Animal Party, Pat Life Radio with Dusty Rainbow. Welcome back, Dusty. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. It's been such a long time and yay. (laughs) Yeah, it's a fast paced show. Um, I wanted to ask you another email. This guy, it's a man. He says, my wife was always mad at me about the toilet saying I left a mess. We couldn't figure it out. And then I saw my cat using the toilet. Apparently, the cat jumps up there and urinates into the toilet the way a person would. And so his question is, did the cat learn this from me? Why is the cat doing this? Now, they already told me, because they've listened to the show regularly, they told me all this stuff. It's vaccinated. It's healthy. It eats. It's, 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 all this stuff that I like to know. And it's a one-cat household. So it's not being intimidated. Um, there's no dogs or anything. It's a one-pet household. So... Why is this cat using the toilet? Is it because the people do? You know, uh, well, I, I would suggest that it probably was his wife. <laughs> the, the cat watched his wife because she's yes, sitting yes, more frequently yes. than he is. And sitting and more I, similarly, is, yes, yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and this is actually not the first time I've heard this. I, uh, I spoke to one other person whose cat observed them and, and started using the box. And I do have to ask... Is the box not clean? You know, I mean, right. how clean is your? How often do you scoop? How often do you change right. it? How inconvenient is the box? Uh, right. You know, I mean, the cat may be just looking for other options, and and he's chosen this. And what a great option! It's better than a box. A great, well, what a great option, but yes and no. 
the the truth is I don't encourage anybody to let their cats use the the toilet. And the reason for that is it may be fine when he's a year old or two or three years old. Right. But cats can actually develop uh, arthritis as early as two. Uh, really? Uh, just without, yes, without an injury, they can develop uh, arthritis just naturally. Uh and and much much earlier than that, if they've suffered some kind of a, a, an injury, but uh, you know, as the cat ages, it becomes more and more difficult. Uh, you know, again, we get back to the cat can't squat. Well, okay, so uh, that means that the at some point they may have to put little steps there if they can't train him. So what I would I would suggest to this person is. Uh, uh, put a litter box, a nice, clean, open litter box mm-hmm. in the bathroom. Yeah. And uh, I, I like Dr. Elsie's because it has the attractant. They love to pee in it. So, but, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, and besides that, uh, it's just gross. You know, when cats use the toilet. Yeah, they're feet, standing on there. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're. I, mean, I know, but in my mind, I had this vision <laughs> of getting all my cats to use one toilet and then, training one of my standard poodles to go around flushing it like the French maid. I thought that would work out great around here. No more litter box, but I guess not, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's it's really, and cats have the, the innate need to cover. It's, you know, they, right. they, they should enjoy using the box. They they like to okay. dig. They like to play in it. They like to, you, know, you watch a kitten, and they'll jump in and slide the third, ba- uh, you know, first base. And, uh, you know, it's it's really, it's something that they should actually kind of, look forward to and uh, they don't get any of that uh natural natural um well they they don't get i understand uh, uh yes <laughs> they have an they instinct for how to go to the bathroom and it's not right. in a toilet um i want to ask you about coconut oil because i find that i discovered years ago that i like it on my own skin and i use it on you know in the summertime and dry skin and i found that one of my cats would do anything for it i mean anything he'll jump up he'll go here he'll go there for just the tiniest little bit off my finger so he finds it he'll if it's in a in a container that he can open he'll knock it on the floor and get into it he's a pretty funny old cat um is there anything wrong with letting them have coconut oil i noticed it it is on the ingredients list of pet foods can i just let them I would think the little lick is fine. Honestly, right. I don't know. You know, cats don't manufacture their own fat. They do have to ingest fat. But, um, uh, you know, I would think in moderation. Again, okay. licking off your finger is fine. I actually use a uh, a coconut cat litter. And um, they really, really like it. I have to, yeah, it's supposed to last one month for a single cat. And uh, I'm lucky if it lasts a week because everyone's like, oh, this is so cool. It feels like dirt. It kind of smells <laughs> like dirt. They love it. So, okay. Uh, yeah. But I think it's okay, just not too much. You don't okay. want them getting diarrhea. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, so old cats, since we've sort of touched on it a little bit, you talked about arthritis, and I talked about this guy seeming to need the coconut oil. Um, I notice old cats, I seem to have to trim their nails more often. Um, and they, did it, should we worry if they're snoring? Is that a yes. sign of something? Yes, it is. Okay, uh, first, back to the, the nails, uh, because cats, older cats don't, scratch like younger cats do the little caps on their nails don't sh- they don't shed them and so yes you need to help them out and at least once a month uh trim the hook off at the the base be very careful and and don't don't quick them because then you're never going to be able to trim their nails again but uh uh you can have one person hold the cat even if this is a cat that hasn't traditionally gotten their nails done uh, hold the cat uh, and give them Gerber's baby food, and they can be licking the baby food while the other person trims the nails. It makes it so much easier. Okay, and uh, this is see, sort of like is, the beef jerky advice for the dog. It's similar. Exactly. Exactly. You trim one nail, you stuff his mouth with something he just loves so much that he's barely paying attention. You trim another nail, you stick another piece in his mouth, and you'd continue until they're all done. 
And he's licking and his lips you- going, what happened? That's it. <laughs> and, and the beauty of the baby food is, you know, you can put it on a, I, I use tongue depressors. You put it on a tongue depressor or a spoon and he's licking it. And, and he's not, I mean, I've got one. He, you try doing his nails uh, without it and you're going to wind up. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need, you're going to look like you've been slashed, I can imagine. Yes. Yep, slash or movie. And uh, if you use the baby food, uh, he doesn't even notice. There's no hissing. There's no fighting. You know, he, it's just, it's fabulous. So that's the way to go. And okay. So I, we talked a little bit about people who don't know their breeds and sometimes they're even in rescue. I used to be, um, often find myself taking dogs to auditions and I would be asked for a Doberman, but they actually wanted a Rottweiler or I'd be asked for a Terrier, but they wanted a cockapoo, you know, like just completely, uh, they just didn't know or they, or they'd get the color, right. They'd ask for, um, a black, white and brown border collie, but they actually meant Australian shepherd, you know, and it was just such a headache with these people. So, so, um, I also find lately the word rescue, Okay, I will get people who have bought a dog from a breeder or some other way. The dog was pampered from the beginning to the end, and they will say, we just rescued and name the... And I, I went, no, 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 no. If you're, if you're buying a dog that's well-raised, well-bred, or, or even, even through friends or, or through a veterinarian, you, you end up with a second-hand dog that is trained and cared for and not neglected... That's not really a rescue dog. A rescue dog is a project. It comes with issues, sometimes health, sometimes behavioral, sometimes both. Uh, that's a rescue pet. So I, I do have trouble with this whole idea that, that every adoption is a rescue because the rescue people are really working hard. And, and you got to know what you're doing and be totally committed to rescue. And sometimes I think people think, They'll get a dog from another country that's had a really rough start in all ways, behavioral and medical and diet, and they will bring that dog to a nice Western life, a nice privileged life, and with love, it will be great, just like a pet adoption, and that's not the case. They end up with a dog that maybe has, well, in one case, I met people who the dog came from Mexico, and within three days, it died. Because, you know, due diligence wasn't shown when it was shipped with a fever. And, and like, horrible heartbreak for the children and the families. And, okay, so they should have just adopted a pet, right? A a vetted pet, even from a local shelter. A pet that was certified and seen and healthy and and had been been known, you know, known for its behavior and history. And, And so I do think sometimes people rescue with the best of intentions, but they're in over their head. Do you find that with cats as well? Oh, absolutely. And and I I may upset some of your listeners, but I have a real problem with people bringing in pets from other countries. Uh, you know, uh Iceland is an amazing country and uh but they don't allow any animals in their country at all unless you've made uh, arrangements well in advance and they go into quarantine and and microchip and all this. And that's because they are separated from the rest of the world and they don't have rabies and they don't have the diseases that we do. And if you try to sneak a cat into Iceland, they're going to euthanize it. And But, they're, but their animals are very, very, very healthy. Now, um, I I, I just don't think it's wise to take animals from Europe or Asia or Mexico and introduce whatever health issues they have into our population. Well, sometimes it's really, really baffles the vets. They have a really hard time figuring out how to treat them, how to heal them, how to cure them. Usually it's some kind of skin thing that just lingers and lingers and lingers or parasite related. And it it can be overwhelming for the people. It would be better if they donated money to that shelter in Mexico or 
delivered a I bag totally, of food or brought totally some first aid supplies, you. right? Like if your heart is breaking, you know, go to the pharmacy, buy a bunch of first aid supplies and take it to the shelter, you know, or go buy some food or water and take it there. The, you know, supplies they need, leashes, collars, blankets. But um, well, an an don't take the pet of here. What I'm talking, mm-hmm. uh, an Sorry. excellent example of what I'm talking about is uh, not even from foreign pets. Uh, if you look at the heartworm, uh, the national heartworm map before Hurricane Katrina, you know, there were pockets. Mm-hmm. But now right. there's heartworms in every single state because 90% of the dogs that we transferred from Katrina to other states were heartworm positive. So we sent these dogs to... In fact, the rest of the world. Wow. Uh huh. And so then the parasites, the the mosquitoes, bite these dogs before they've been treated, and then eventually it gets introduced into the uh, wild canine population, wolves and and foxes and and coyotes. And once that's happened, you're done. You are totally done. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. And so here, all these states that didn't have it now have heartworms because we transferred all those Katrina dogs. And what's the answer? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. But I do know that this affects every single domestic dog and cat in the country because we moved all those Katrina dogs to places that didn't have heartworms. Places where the vets and the protocol still says, don't bother, don't worry, it's not here, like where I live. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. But it's everywhere because, you know, even if you're in a desert area like, say, Phoenix, yeah. you, you, still have, you still have people who water their, their lawns. You still have bird baths. You still have golf courses with the ponds. You've got, you know, mosquitoes, mosquitoes. are everywhere. Right. And, uh, yeah. So, part of, you know, part of me goes, oh, yes, that's wonderful. And part of me goes, oh, what are you people thinking? The other thing about this itchy, scratchy cat that we got that email about, I keep wondering, is if I had a dog that was similar and someone was asking me about it, the first thing I would say to them is bathe it. It could have a, an allergy to something in, you know, because usually dogs swim and run around in grass and mud and other dogs, etc. Mm-hmm. So I would be telling them for the first week, bathe it every day. For the second week, bathe it every other day. For the third week, bathe it every third day. The, the fourth week, bathe it twice a week. Uh, get a good, you know, antiseptic shampoo, real mild, like Hibitane, like some kind of, you know, vet type of hospital type that you get at a drugstore and lather it all up. Like rinse the dog first, lather it all up, leave it 10 minutes, then rinse it all off, dry it all off, repeat next day, right? Okay. You can't do that with a cat, can you? Cats don't like the bath. What are we going to do about that? You can't bathe this cat, can you? Well, uh, you know, uh, the vet has already said that there's nothing there. Uh, Right. Okay. So I would be willing to go a different route. Uh, One easy way to uh, perhaps do a fix is let's change him to a hypoallergenic food okay and and see how he responds i had a poor cat oh god bless him he um he's similar to what you're talking about the the vet did diagnose him with ocd because he was obsessed with this one place in his tail and okay. he, uh, when he was a kitten he he did have a uh, ringworm on that place so okay. i don't know what happened but he would bite it, and there were times when he bit it so badly that I actually had to apply um, pressure to uh, the the uh, to stop the bleeding. Vein. <gasps> yes. Oh my gosh! Oh, that's oh, that's terrible. It, bleeding. Yes. So uh, anyway, uh, and he wound up breaking it in three different places, and finally I said, just just amputate it. There, there, there's yeah, obviously yeah. a problem with his nerve. Just amputate it. We argued about that a lot because he said, "Well, you know, we could create other problems if we." Amputate. Well, because it is part of the spine. I understand that it's not it just like part, you know an accessory, but, but, but if but it's in this, causing in this particular yeah, case, absolutely. he actually he we amputated. He was so much happier. However, later on, he did develop food allergies where he was itchy in other places. And uh, we uh, uh, we fought that steroids and such. Finally, we switched his food to uh, a hypoallergenic diet, 
and it went away. So, you know, that that would be a pretty easy fix. Let's just change him to a hypoallergenic diet, see if he's responding. Now, I've had really you know, good luck with that at the kennel. Uh, sometimes I get dogs coming in uh, to Camp Good Dog. That's, you know, it's a boarding kennel. We do breeding and training as well, but it's m- primarily a boarding kennel. And sometimes a dog will come in, it'll be so afflicted. And I will say to the people, would you like me to try a hypoallergenic food while he's here? And sometimes they'll say yes. And uh, I'll, I'll use Royal Canaan hypoallergenic. And it's um, like uh, yams are in it. And I think the protein is duck. They love it. They go crazy for it, and it does seem to make a big, big difference. So I think hypoallergenic food makes sense. It it really does. And then if that doesn't work, then some of the things you were talking about with the dogs, you know, it could be Mm -hmm. stress-related. Now, in cats, there is something called feline uh, uh, interstitial or idiopathic cystitis. It's a... a, uh, swelling, uh, uh, an inflammation of the bladder with no known cause. It causes inappropriate elimination. And um, new, the latest research shows that it's brought on by stress. It comes and goes, but it's also a systemic disease. And what happens is these poor cats, it's not just the bladder that's affected. Mm. There are other organ systems. I mean, it could be digestive. It could be, it could be the skin. So, and how do you treat that? You treat idiopathic cystitis by playing with your cat, by environmental enrichment, by making them run, uh, 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 exercising them. And so get a toy out, play with them. You know, a year ago, you, you explained it. You said, the cats don't want you to just throw the ball and walk away. They want a prey mate. They want you to be their prey. So they I totally get that. They want a prey mate. They want a prey mate. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's that was exactly it. right. Got it right then. So, okay, so you know what? We're running out of time. I want to make sure people oh, know about your book. Can you tell them one more time the title and where they can get it? Sure. Okay, they can uh, get my book. It's called Finding Your Lost Cat. Uh, let's see, Finding Your Lost Cat, The Feline Specific Guide to Your Happy Reunion. And uh, it's available uh, on Amazon. Uh, most people that need it need it right now. So you can get it on Kindle and Nook. Um, but uh, if you want to order the, the physical book and give it to somebody, it is uh, available in trade paperback. And you know, I've yeah. had a um, situation over the years. I live on a farm, as you know, but the listeners might not. It's five acres. It's fenced. The dogs patrol. So coyotes don't tend to come here or anything like that. And the cats do have outside access. And I hope they'll stay within the fences. Of course, that doesn't happen. They love to climb fences, sit on the tops, and go to the other side. But... Uh, But um, I have had occasion, like when I first built the kennel in the year 2000, all the renovations and the backhoe machines and stuff spooked one of my cats. Orca was her name. And she left. But she didn't go far. She was in my neighbor's shed the whole time. And I think a lot of times the missing cat, you know, you think, okay, well, if she doesn't want to come home, why force her? Well, actually, I ended up setting up. She does want to come home. She does. She does. does. I ended up, after months of her being missing, I figured out where she was, and I ended up sending, setting up, you know, a live trap, and I caught her, and I carried her into the house, and I thought she was going to be crazy cat, you know, she'd been living on her own all this time, opened up, and she wouldn't come to me, I would see her out there, and I would call her and call her, no, not a chance, she'd run, live trapped her, brought her in the house, the moment she was back where she knew where she was, Old cat came out, rubbing like she'd never left. So don't give up on your lost cat, right, Dusty? Exactly. And the the truth is, uh, if I have like one minute, uh, there was a, to let you know what your cat is thinking. Uh, Back in the first Gulf War, there was a a pilot shot down. His name was Captain Scott O'Grady. And he was shot down over enemy territory. And he had to walk that fine line. There were, there were enemy fighters that were going to find him and kill him or put him in, you know, some kind of horrible POW situation. And so he had to not get detected by the enemy and still try to get detected by his people. And it took a couple of days. So that's what your kitty's going through. He is 
pray, and he is scared to death, and he is afraid that if he responds to you and your voice or comes to you, he is going to get eaten. So, uh, you know, uh, this is science-based. I did a lot of work on, on what actually, what actually uh, works, uh, and I, I spend a lot of time explaining how to do just the right sign. So, I, and it's really important. Uh, uh, my cat disappeared uh, while we were in uh, Alaska. She'd been gone three weeks. I came home. I had the flu. And so finally my husband just said, do what the book says. And I did. I had enough energy to make three signs that were very specific, put them out, and 16 hours later I got a call from a guy saying, I'm looking at your cat. I'm walking my dog. I saw your big, huge sign in the perfect place, and, uh, you know, I'm looking at her right now. And 15 minutes later she was at home eating. Oh, nice. Okay, so don't give up on your cat. You can find your cat, and she does want to come home. She does. They don't. They don't want to be out on their own. No, no, because there's lots of stuff out there in their minds that are going to eat them, and so that's why they're not responding. It's not that they don't want to respond to you. It's just if I make any noise, I'm I'm going to get eaten. So well, never give up. Never surrender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, in some cases, like with me and this cat from three doors down years ago, or you and that cat, you neutered, uh, sometimes the cat does pick. He does want to have two owners or he does want to have somebody else. But you want to know that because most of the time, that's not the case. Most of the time, your your cat is in dire straits living well, and, for, and, and, and usually outdoor are cats. Three, uh, sorry, they're yeah. usually within uh, a block of your house. They don't so he's so far. close. He wants to come home and he's so mm-hmm. scared and he's really hungry and he's either too hot or too cold and very thirsty and everything is out to get him and he really, really, really wants to come home. So, um, yeah, so get Dusty's book if you've lost your cat and hopefully you can have your cat back by Christmas. There you go. Or soon. There you go. Okay, thanks so much, Dusty. Thank you for joining me today. Well, thank you for inviting me. I, it's, it's good talking to you and your listeners again. I can't wait to do this again. Dusty, if that's okay, I'd love to book you in the new year and do a follow-up show. I'm sure every time I have you on the show, it makes people email me their cat problems. And some of them I can solve, but some of them, I don't know, like itchy scratchy today. So <laughs> hypoallergenic food is a great way to go. And I think he Playing should do with that. Cat. Cat. The, the exercise, the environmental enrichment, very important. And, and um, we go into all that in my book, uh, Cat Scene Investigator. Cat Scene Investigator. My favorite is The Cat Wrangling Made Easy. I just love that book. I love it because I have many cats. And if you have many cats, you need that book by Dusty. <laughs> I'm getting ready to update it. It's out of print right now, but I'm getting ready to update it. Oh, put it on ebook. You know what? I'm, I'm doing that with all my old book lists. Instead of putting them out hard copy now, I'm just going to edit them and make them up to date and get them out on ebooks and maybe I'll even learn how to read an ebook when I do that <laughs> we're going to work on that <laughs> yeah we'll work on that okay so everybody we'll have Dusty back in the new year and uh, from Dusty Rainbow, Deb Wolf and Pet Life Radio be good to your animals Let's Talk Pets every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com <laughs>